Hey, hello everyone. Uh, this is Trader Shivai. So you guys know that we had started a series in Hindi, which was called Trading with Institutional Tools, where we have given insights on institutional tools like market profile, volume profile, VWAP, order flow, delta indicator, bar statistics, and all those things. Now, since those videos were in Hindi, many of you guys have requested that we want the same videos in English. So in this series, we are going to cover the same topics but the topics will be covered in English. So without wasting your time, let's go and see what is the content for this course. So similar to Hindi series, we are first going to cover order flow concepts, which are quite basic. So this particular lecture will be based on order flow concepts, which are basic concepts. In the next video, we will understand about the bar statistics features because many of you are overwhelmed by the number of options in the bar statistics and you are not able to understand what is the significance for each option. Then in the third video, we are going to cover advanced topics in the order flow like absorption, exhaustion, delta divergences, aggression on the opposite side, how to take the trade based on all these things. The fourth and fifth videos are very special because they will give you the context of the market. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to understand the auction market theory and we are going to take help of market profile, volume profile and VWAP. So we have a unique way of combining market profile, volume profile and VWAP. Also, we are trying to use multiple time frame analysis by using them with the help of auction market theory. So that will be covering in the fourth and fifth videos. So now let's start with the first video. So today's class is going to be very basic. So in this class, we are going to cover these many topics. So what is the difference between market orders and limit orders? Then we will understand what is the relation between depth of market and footprint charts. Okay. Then we will understand the different kind of footprint charts like imbalance chart and the entire footprint charts and what are the options under that. Then we will understand the significance of tick size. What does the format volume option does? and how to use the power trade scanner. We also have some preset features, which we will be covering in footprint charts. So now let's start with understanding what is the market order and what is the limit order. So as you can see in the picture, market sell order are always fulfilled by limit buy orders and limit sell orders are always fulfilled or matched by market buy orders, okay? So basically, if you see in the market, we get a two-way auction. So that I'll be showing you very soon on the depth of market. So if you understand, there is always two-way auction going on. It's not only one way that there is a buyer and there is a seller, no. There always be some limit buyer and there will always be some limit seller. And against those, there will be market buyer and market seller, okay? so. Against the limit buy order, we have market sell order. And against the limit sell order, we have market buy order. Okay. Now, question is, what is the difference between the limit order and the market order? Okay. So now let me try to explain it with an example. So suppose you have gone to a vegetable shop. Okay. Now we will be considering two scenarios. So first scenario is, you have a function in your home. Okay. And the function is today itself you have gone to buy vegetables from the shop. Now, you have a compulsion that you have to buy vegetables because there is a function in your home, okay? You cannot avoid buying vegetables for tomorrow. You have to buy it today. So that is for very sure. Now you have gone to vegetable shop and now you are asking the price of tomato. Now the shopkeeper is saying that the price of tomato is 100 rupees per kg, right? So it is a limit sell order put by the vegetable shopkeeper, okay? So the limit sell order here is 100 rupees per kg for tomato. Now you have gone to the tomato shop. Now you are asking him, okay, can you give me it at 80 rupees per kg? He's saying no. Then you will say, can you give it uh, on 90 rupees per kg? Still he's saying no. Now what you are going to do, you are going to buy the tomato at 100 rupees per kg. The reason being simple because here it is your compulsion to buy tomato at 100 rupees per kg. Okay. So if you are going to buy at the price set by the vegetable shopkeeper, so the vegetable shopkeeper price is limit sell price and you are buying that limit sell price at market buy order. 
Okay, so your order is now considered as a market buy order. So whatever the market rate is, you are going to buy at that particular price. Okay, so now you're not able to negotiate it. Okay, now let's consider the second scenario. Now in this scenario, the vegetable shopkeeper is in a hurry to close his shop. So for example, it's getting late in the night and the vegetable shopkeeper wants to close his shop and want to go home. Also, he does not want to carry the tomato for the next day, okay, because he just want to sell everything today. Now you have gone to vegetable shop and you are asking, what is the price of tomato? Now the vegetable shopkeeper says the price of tomato is just 50 rupees per kg. But here you are saying, no, I am going to buy just 30 rupees per kg. Okay. So the problem here is now this time there is a compulsion with the shopkeeper. It's not a compulsion with you, but it's compulsion with shopkeeper. So what he is going to do, he will say, okay, fine. I'm going to sell you at just 30 rupees per kg. Just give me money and take tomatoes, right? So now here you have set the terms. Now here you have decided the price of tomato that is limit by order and that is 30 rupees per kg. The shopkeeper is selling his tomato as 30 rupees per kg. So that is the market sell order against your limit by order. Okay, so did you understand this thing? Now we are going to see the depth of market and relate the same example. Okay, and we'll show how these limit orders and market orders are matching. Okay, before that, I want to tell you one more thing. So if you see the market, market sometimes it is moving and sometimes it is stalling. So sometimes you see market is consolidating at a particular level or in a particular range. And sometimes the market is giving a very high trending move. Okay. So it is the market sell or market buy orders which are actually moving the market down or up. But the limit buy and the limit sell, these are the orders which are actually stalling the market and keeping the market in a range bound. Okay, so we will understand all these things in a more detail when we understand the option market theory and all those things. So first, let us go to chart and let me show you the depth of market and footprint charts and understand the things more clearly. Okay, so now we are on the chart and let's go to depth of market. So now if you see depth of market, you can see these are the limit sell orders, okay, which are reflected on the ask side. Okay, so now you can imagine these orders as the shopkeeper saying that I'm going to sell my tomato as just 100 rupees per kg, not less than that. So you can see the orders are stacked one above another and these guys are trying to sell. They, they, are, they are setting terms that we are not going to sell below this. We'll be selling at this price only. Okay, so this is the ask price or the limit sell order. In the same way, these are the limit buy orders. They are saying that we are not going to buy, uh, you know, above this price. So now if you see, these are the limit buy orders and these are the limit sell orders. So there is always a gap. So, so for example, this particular guy want to sell at 63144 and he wants to buy at 63143. So can the transaction happen between these two? It can never happen because if a person is saying he is not going to sell below that particular price, say for example, 100, and you are saying that you are not going to buy above 90 rupees, the transaction is not going to happen. So the transaction will only happen when someone is agreeing to buy at 100 rupees or if someone is agreeing to sell at 90 rupees, then you will be able to buy at 90 rupees, right? So this is how these limit orders are placed. Now, how this order flow chart is related to these sell orders, okay? So as we can see, these are the limit buy orders and these are the limit sell orders. Against these, as we have seen, against these limit buy orders, we have to get market sell orders. So what you are going to do is simply just imagine you just cut this candle, okay? Just cut this candle and paste it over here above this top. Okay. So these are the limit buy orders and these are market sell orders. So these market sell orders keep on matching with these limit buy orders. And similarly, these limit sell orders keep on matching with these market buy orders. Okay. So in the depth of market, you are getting information about limit orders 
and in footprint charts, you are getting information about the market orders. So it is market orders, which is actually moving the prices and it is limit order, which is actually stalling the prices. So for example, if there is a very big limit order at a particular level, that limit order is going to act like a support or resistance. Okay, but if you see very big market orders, you know, on the buy side or on the sell side, then you can think that the market is ready to move towards upside or downside, right? So this is how limit orders and market orders interplay is working. So I hope you understood about it. Okay, so after learning the basics of limit orders and market orders, now let us understand how to put footprint charts and what are the settings about it. So first of all, you should understand that you can get footprint charts only for stocks, futures, options. You will not get footprint chart for index. Why? Because index does not have any volume. Okay. Index is just an indication of the state of market. Okay. But futures are traded. So that is why you will get order flow for futures, options, and stocks. So that is point number one. Now, say for example, we are going to use nifty futures chart. So if you type nifty over here, you will see this is index. These are the futures and this is option. So if you click on futures, you will get six futures chart. Okay. So one is nifty one continuous, another is nifty two continuous, three continuous. Then these are monthly futures. So what is the difference between all these six? So first of all, these are the actual futures which are traded in the exchange. So this is June futures. This is July expiry future. And this is August expiry future. So what are these? So friends, what happens? These futures are expiring every month. Okay. So if you keep on looking at them, your chart will get discontinuous every month. Okay. So what we do, we do at our end, we keep on combining these monthly futures and we keep on getting the continuous futures chart. Okay. So if you want to see the continuous chart, you can click on nifty one, two or three. So you should click on nifty one continuous future, which will be the continuous future chart of the current expiry. But the point is these three are not tradable. So if you are doing paper trading or if you are doing actual trading for nifty futures, you should not click on these. You should always go with these so that you can trade. But if you are simply looking at the chart for order flow, you can use nifty one, two and three. Okay. So this was about futures. Now, if you want to see the options chart, so if you click on options, now the option chain will appear. And if you want to see a order flow chart for a particular strike price, you just click on that and you will see the order flow chart for that particular strike price. Okay. So this is how you see the order flow chart for futures options. And let me also show you one example for stocks. So for example, you are clicking on Reliance. So this is Reliance stock chart. This is futures chart and this is options. So click on Reliance industry. This is your Reliance stock chart. Now let us understand the different type of order flow charts available on Go charting. So if you click on chart types and you scroll a little down, you will see there are two different chart types. One is imbalance and second is cluster. So if you click on imbalance, by the way, you can also click on heart shape over here and they will come as favorite. Okay. So we have this imbalance chart option here. So if you click on imbalance, you will get this imbalance chart type. Okay. And you can also see the cluster chart type. So what is the difference between these two? So it is not about difference. So this is our main chart that is footprint chart. Imbalance chart is just one type of footprint chart. Okay. Which is used widely by traders. So let me first talk about the imbalance chart and what is the imbalance settings. So now we have selected imbalance chart. Now you can see there are few yellow color blocks. Okay. So what are those boxes and what they represent? So let's go to setting of imbalance. Okay. Now, if you scroll it a little down, let me show you very important settings. So one very important setting is show profile. Okay. So if you switch off the profile, you will see imbalance chart like this. Now, the problem in this chart is there are numbers written, but you will not be able to make anything where the big orders are, uh, you know, lying just because everything is shown with the same width of profile. Okay. So if you click on show profile, now you can clearly see which has the maximum number of orders, which block has maximum orders. It is clearly seen. 
Now let us talk about the imbalance colors. So if the imbalance is there, the box will be shown in yellow color and the text will be shown in the blue color, okay? Now how you are going to calculate the imbalance? So basically there are two methods. You can put a fixed value, okay? So if you want to see that there is this much of volume and then only the imbalance should show, then you can put the volume value over here or else you can go with the ratios. Now, what about the ratio? So here we have set the limit as 300. So what does that mean? If the market buy orders are more than three times the market sell orders, you are going to get imbalance, okay? So how? So first of all, we always compare diagonally, okay? So now you see here, there are 14K sell orders and 135K market buy orders. So if you multiply three to 14K, you are getting just 42K, but here we are having 135K. So we are having imbalance on the buy side. Similarly, if you compare here, this is 276K and this is 88K. So if you multiply 88K with three, this will not come to 276K. That is why you are getting imbalance on the sell side. So based on the ratio, you will be getting imbalance either on the buy side or in the sell side. If you want these imbalance to act like support and resistance, you can simply click on show SR. Now, the number of stacked imbalances, if they are three, then you will be getting them as support or resistance. Now here we can see there are two stacked imbalances. So if you change it to two, now you see you are getting it as a resistance, okay? And if you're changing it to one, you will see there are a lot of supports and resistances, okay? So you can make it to three. Right. Now, these are the colors and text setting. So you can set the background color by this option. If you don't want the colors, you can simply switch it off. There will be no background color. However, you can see yellow color because that is the imbalance color. Okay. So if you don't want to see that also, you can simply switch off show SR zones and you can change this yellow color transparency to zero. So you are not going to see any color as of now. Okay. In this background color, these are the fill colors. So suppose on the left hand side, market sell order fill color will be this. If the market sell orders are very heavy, so it will be represented by dark red color and the text will be black color. Same is true for the right cluster. Now, what is lopsided format? So for example, a particular candle is having more number of buy orders than sell orders. So if you switch on the lopsided format, it will give more importance to buy order, okay? It will remove all the small sell orders, okay, from that candle. Then lopsided scales can also scale them down accordingly. What is point of control? So point of control is the point where the maximum number of buy and sell orders are there. So suppose I switch it off and switch it on. You see for this particular candle, this is the point of control in buy side and this is the point of control in the sell side. Now we have this POC marker and volume POC. These are same thing for volume point of control. So this was about the market buy orders and market sell orders. But what about the maximum number of volume? Okay, so volume, where it is max, it will be shown by volume POC. So it will be simply marked, but if you want a thick painting, now it will be shown like this, okay? So it's better to use this one so that you can also see the buy and sell orders. You can also do extend volume POC, okay? So if you want that a particular number of volume has come and you want that POC to get extended, you can use this option. You can also put the value of that volume. Then you can do the previous POC marker. You can also set the value area range for a particular candle, okay? So generally we talk about the value area in case of a, a volume profile or market profile, but you can also see there's a profile for a particular candle. So every candle has its own profile. So you can also set the value area for that particular, for that particular candle. And you can also do the extension for that particular value area. These are the colors for engulfing value area stroke and engulfing value area extension fill. What was the VWAP at that particular candle? You can do the marking with this option and the volume also. So what was the volume in this particular candle? It will be shown over here. You can do the delta markers, cumulative delta markers. So these options will be reflected above the candle. Then if there's a delta divergence, it will be shown here. So for example, this particular candle, 
you see here we can see a delta divergence. So what is delta divergence, friends? So let me explain it briefly over here. We will be explaining it in detail in next few videos. So for example, if you see this particular candle, you see the delta. What is delta? Delta is 21.34K. Okay. So this is a positive delta. Means there were more number of buyers, which you can also see in the candle. This is 76, 76K buyer and 51K sellers. So there is more number of buyers in the, this particular candle. So if there is more number of buyers, the candle price should go up, but it has come down. So because it has come down, you will get the delta divergence. Okay. Now you can also mark your cot levels. So what is cot high and cot low for that particular candle? What is the high and low for that particular candle? And what is the length of body? Okay, so these are some markers. And you can also enable the unfinished auction. Unfinished auction is a concept which we'll be explaining in order flow advanced concept. That is third video. Okay, so hold it on as of now. Now after understanding the imbalance charts, let us understand the footprint chart. So footprint chart is a little difference where we have few more options. Now, what are those few more options? So here, if you see, now you have option to adjust the columns. So you can either have single column or you can have double column. Now let us try to explore the options for each column. So in the left cluster and in the right cluster, if you see, there are these options. What is What, <clears throat> what are these options? Trades, buy trades, buy trade percentage, sell trade, sell trade percentage, volume, buy volume, buy volume percent, and all these options, okay? So you can choose these options accordingly. Now, coming to these trade options and buy volume percentage, we will be explaining these options in great detail in the next video, which will be about bar statistics. You can see the same option in the bar statistics like buy volume percentage, sell volume percentage. There are multiple options which are overlapping. So we'll be explaining about these uh, options in detail in the next video. But for now, let me show you a very interesting footprint chart. So here, can you see this option of Delta? You click on this Delta and now on the right cluster, you can set as volume. Okay. And you make show left profile and show right profile. So this is a very interesting uh, footprint chart where you are able to see the delta as well as the volume for that particular candle and this is a lot of information in a candle okay so this was about the footprint chart the, this was the only setting which is different from imbalance chart rest settings are same now we also have some preset features make sure that you are applying the footprint chart and not the imbalance chart okay so this is our footprint chart and this is our imbalance chart we have to apply a footprint chart now right click on a candle go to preset and here you have delta profile charts again go to preset you have the bid as profile you have the volume profile okay so these are some presets available for footprint charts after understanding these things now let us go to order flow settings so if you click on setting over here you have this order flow option now here we have tick manager okay so it is right now set into auto mode so what is this tick manager friends? See for each tick is coming only for five paisa. So five paisa is for one tick. Now if you multiply five paisa with 200, which we have filled here. So five paisa into 200 will be 10 rupees. So the block size is coming as 10 rupees. So if you suppose you want to see the limit. So what is the price? 2899 that is, uh, you know, 2900. And you see this limit that is 29. 10 okay so 2900 to 2910 that is 10 rupees so whatever the buy and sell orders are coming in the range of 10 rupees this will be reflected over here okay now many people ask what is the right block size so friends let me tell you there is nothing right or wrong block size the point here is if you keep the block size very low so for example few people are keeping it as low as two or three you're not going to take any information from this. And if you're keeping it very high, say for example, 200 or 2000, again, there is no meaningful information, okay? So first of all, you if, you, if you're not understanding anything, you can keep it into auto mode. This will automatically optimize the tick size for you. And then if you want to put some value over it, you can put some values and see if it is working for you or not. So for example, I'm putting 20, 
I don't think I'll be able to understand anything. So I'll be going for 50. Now 50 is looking quite good to me. Okay. So there is no need to do lots of research in tech size. Okay. Because there is a scope for research in other areas like auction market theory, market profile, value areas, and all those things, rather than doing lots of research on just tick size. So it should be a reasonable tick size, I will say. Okay. Then what is format volume? So friends, if you switch on this format volume, you have to just see this number of orders, okay? So you see these orders number have changed, okay? So what is happening basically, we have uh, we have put a manual lot size of 25 over here. So this entire numbers are divided by 25. Now, if you don't want manual lot size, if you want to divide them by auto lot size, that is basically the exact lot size for the Reliance you can simply uh, click on format volume and then auto lot size. So now it will divide by auto lot size of Reliance. Okay. Then what is power trade scanner? So before using power trade scanner, you should make sure that format volume is off so that you're getting exact value for the volume. Okay. Now, what is the volume coming? Okay. So for example, we are having a five minute chart over here. And what is the volume coming? The volume is coming 1.22 million, okay? So if we are getting 1.22 million volume in five minutes, and now you want to set the time limit only 10 seconds. So you should understand what volume will come in 10 seconds. So accordingly, you have to take consideration of the five minute volume and get it divided by uh, five into 60 seconds, that is 300 seconds. So that volume is coming in one second. And if you multiply that volume to 10, that should be the volume coming in 10 seconds. So accordingly, you can take some average volume settings divided by that and, you know, do an optimized setting on your time interval and the total volume. And then if the volume is crossing that average limit, you will be getting signal on the live market. Okay. That is how this power trade scanner uh, works. So this was about the basic understanding of the order flow charts, market order, limit order, and these tick and format volume settings. So in the next video, we will learn about more advanced features that is bar statistic feature and other things. Thank you guys.